Hey, welcome to Battle for the Base Layer. As everyone knows, Ethereum has been serving as the as the foundation for the world of smart contracts, but tons and tons of other projects have come along, things like Harmony and Near and Polkadot and Kusama, where you get tattoos for joining. Um, so all kinds of them have come along. We're here to talk about this battle to take over the space of smart contracts. I'm here with uh, Will Foxley. Will, welcome. Thanks for joining me for this event. Sure. Thanks for having me. Good to see you, Brady. Well, this is your first consensus, right? Yeah, pretty nuts. It's all online, though, so a little <laughs> sad, true. but making the best of it. Now, this fits well. Every consensus is completely different. So, you know, this is actually, it just fits the theme. For sure, for sure. I hope you're having a good time. All right, cool. So up first, uh, we're going to talk about Polkadot, which is being built by Parity Technologies, a giant blockchain interoperability play. Um, an easy way to send funds between different projects, you know, bouncing money from Litecoin over to Bitcoin or to, you know, anywhere you might want to go. Uh, and to discuss it, we're here with Yuta Steiner, uh, the CEO of Parity Technologies, uh, which is building Polkadot. Hey, Yuta, are you there? Yes. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. How's it going? Great. Good. Well, thanks for having us. Thanks for having Thanks for being here with us. Um, so I guess my first question for you is, I feel like the narrative around uh, Polkadot has shifted a little bit. At first, uh, it was talked about as this interoperability event, but I understand, you know, just today, uh, Gavin Wood was talking about mergers and acquisitions. It sounds more like, uh, like parity seems to be after sort of taking over the blockchain space rather than making them talk to each other. Can you explain this a little bit more for us? Yeah, sure. I mean, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I guess when we started, um, interoperability was one of the obvious problems that people saw in blockchain, um, while in fact, um, there's a range of things um, that need to be in place in order for um, there to be a blockchain platform for generalized applications. Um, other issues are scalability, um, governance is a big one, um, the fact that you need to be able to customize for the particular um, application you want to deploy. And it's really like um, the, that big range of, of issues that we're trying to address um, with the Polkadot framework. Cool. Um, and, um, and Go ahead, Will. Yeah, so I just want to kind of dive into that a little bit more and get more specific. We've seen a few pair chains be built out over this last year. Uh, Shift Network pretty recently, Noddle was one, and then Chainlink is also building a pair chain. Uh, these specific applications, how do you see it in the grand scheme of, of uh, Polkadot? And then as it com competes against Ethereum itself, uh, is it just scooping these up and taking them away? Is it going to eat away the rest of the blockchains, kind of like uh, Gavin Wood said in his Coindesk op-ed this last December? Um, just wanting a little bit more in-depth uh, opinion on that part. I mean, I think we've clearly seen a lot of interest from projects who have been frustrated by the... Um by the shortcomings of what Ethereum at this stage um, can deliver. Um, but it's, I mean, it's it's more than just like saying, oh, the shortcomings because it's not scalable, it's it's too slow, all these things. Um, because there's a lot of things that, that Polkadot provides at this stage, which people hadn't really thought about um, when uh, Ethereum came along as a smart contract platform, like the fact that we have the substrate framework that lets you like in a really easy fashion um, develop a new a new chain um, and thus opens up this entire design space between well before you could just like from scratch build your blockchain which is a really tedious effort like takes years basically or otherwise like be very much restricted by what a smart contract <clears throat> virtual machine can provide you like looks on paper as like well it's it's a turn complete machine but then effectively it's it's it has a lot of overhead it's very specialized um, so there's a lot of things you can't really do. Um, and so with Substrate, we're opening up this entire design space. So I think, um, and that's why I'm really looking forward to it, um, there'll be a lot of um, uh, projects um, like that that actually leverage this um, to customize to their use cases. And that's the stuff I'm, I'm really looking forward, like um, new things that, that couldn't be built before. Um, zero knowledge proofs, for example, just way too expensive um, that we can now Established and uh, um, in the in the substrate and Polkadot framework. 
but so, I mean, we heard today uh, Vitalik Buterin said that, you know, if ETH, ETH 2.0 actually happens, it's going to be like in a thousand fold increase in power. Um, so obviously Ethereum wants a lot of those same projects to come build on them. I mean, it, it seems hard to view at this point um, Polkadot and Ethereum as anything but competitors. I mean, they, so they are effectively, they, they have become competitors at this point. Is that right? Well, I mean, there's a bunch of projects, as I said, like that have been frustrated with that they couldn't actually build um, what Ethereum has has promised. And when we started with ETH, when I mean, I was involved in the early days, um, there was always the idea that Ethereum 2 um, needs to be in place um, for it to actually um, deliver. So, yeah, clearly um, what we're trying to establish is that vision that, that Gav had set out back in the back in the days of having a generalized compute platform for Web3. Great. And kind of launching from there, we saw at the Ready Layer One conference, uh, Gavin laid out a timeline for launching Polkadot. Is, mm -hmm. He only said there's like a date, but he didn't give a specific date. Do you have one for us? Uh, and if not, what are some hurdles in the immediate future for laying out Polkadot? I mean, effectively, the launch process had already um, started last year with the, with the Kusama um, framework that we um, that we established um, for having a live sort of um, early version of, of Polkadot um, to uh, to ensure that what we're building is um, is very much functioning in the wild. Um, so there's a there's a few audit things um, that we're waiting for, a few technical things, but. In principle, we are we are ready to um, to launch fairly soon, and we'll um, we keep people updated on the exact date. and And then, um, similar, I don't know. It depends on whether you follow Kusama. Like, there's it's a stage process. Um, so initially, there'll be a proof of authority network um, that is started to ensure that everything runs smoothly. And then over time, more and more functionality will be added. Um, the network will be decentralized. Um, the token transfer will be enabled, such that um, in a in a matter of a, a few months, um, the uh, the network will become uh, functioning. So I, I want to go back to this question about launching projects on uh, on Polkadot. But my fir but first, you you brought up Kusama. Um, I just have to know: do you do you have one of those Kusama bird tattoos? Did you get one of those? Not yet, to be honest. <laughs> no. Oh man. <laughs> well, the lockdown happened, so I was short of like getting one. But then the lockdown. Oh, happened, you didn't have so. one. All right. All right. Well, I just learned about that today. I was like, wow, that's. That is a sign of community right there. Okay, so back to this question about uh, projects launching, on, you know, which protocol they'll launch on. Um, there's this one entrepreneur in the space who often tells me that, like, Bitcoin and Ethereum can never be disrupted because they've just established the networks for what the two of them are good for. You have to do something else that's new and different. And so, you know, you can, you can make your criti criticisms of 2017, but 2017 established Ethereum as the place to start decentralized projects, even if it had its faults. I mean, is it enough to have a better feature set uh, if you've just you've already you already have that network for getting things off the ground, like Ethereum does? I mean, there's there's certainly network effects um, uh, in in the blockchain space. However, I would argue that um, putting Ethereum and Bitcoin in one bucket bucket in this case is um, is not right the right way of looking at it. Like while Bitcoin basically promises or like its main value proposition that it that it doesn't change um, for a software platform, that's very different. Like things need to be involved. Things need to get faster, better, like right. the fundamental need to change. And if you're too slow to change, um, you'll become obsolete. And that's a, that's a very different thing. So, and, and clearly um, Ethereum is not, um, uh, hasn't been functional enough um, to let people build what they wanted to build. So yeah, I, I don't think that's a fair way of looking at it. Interesting. Well, I want to ask a pretty blunt question. Why would I build on Cosmos versus Polkadot or Polkadot versus Cosmos? Um, it does very, very different things. Um, so while on a high level, like it says both, both the interoperability for, um, for Polkadot is really just one of the things that Polkadot does. Um, so if you're keen on like really ex really like exploring um, how to build a, a decentralized application, like you need a full framework that lets you experiment on all sorts of levels, and that that's what Polkadot um, Polkadot provides you. While Cosmos was an interesting pro proposition at the time, like when people were sort of 
starting to grasp what the shortcomings are of the technology at the time, like three, three, four years ago. And interoperability definitely was one. So it, it was an interesting proposition. But there's so much more um, that needs to be in place for Web3 to come alive. So that if this is what you're interested in, like you certainly want to look at Polkadot and Substrate. But isn't it isn't it true that more more companies, more projects are are putting things on Cosmos now? I mean, they're they're further along. At least that's I don't I don't have a count from either one of you, but it just it feels that way watching the space. Am I am I wrong about that? Um, it certainly certainly feels to me that way that more projects are building on Polkadot and Kusama. Don't you so, guys I mean, have a little bit of a sorry? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Don't you guys have a little bit of a ceiling? Like, isn't there, isn't it like to become a parachain, for example, you can't just like go out and become a parachain. You sort of have to get approved and there's only so many that, um, that Polkadot can approve. Isn't that right? Whereas Cosmos, anyone can plug into. Mm, that was an, that was an early misconception of what we had built. Um, so an early, ver like in the, in the very early days, there was only that concept of, of parachains. And that, that is indeed like, that is a capital expenditure that you need to make as a as a project however there's other things we've um we've designed along the way uh, there's the notion of power threads so basically a dynamic way of plugging in and out of the polka dot network so it's more um an ongoing expense that you have uh, pay as you go um and that makes it totally feasible for for projects um even if they don't want to make this bigger capital expenditure um to to become a part of the network and then if you like an early project um another thing you might want to do is um is a trial um, or sort of build your MVP in, in the cos in the Kusama context, and then once the transactions you're doing um, become more valuable, move on, uh, move on to Polkadot. So there's various things that we've done in order to reduce the barrier to entry that um, that would have been if it was just just parachains um, would have been higher. Okay, great. Just kind of wrapping up uh, the conversation here, I do want to ask a little bit about Kusama. What are what have been some quick takes on uh, learning from the three or so Kusama testnet uh, that you guys did? And uh, how is that going to be moved into Polkadot? Like, what are the lessons from those testnets? Mm. So um, one of the key things that Polkadot delivers is the on-chain um, upgradability. And I think that's very crucial for a dynamic software platform to be able um, to offer a concise um, way of integrating um, new feature sets. So that was one of the key things um, that we wanted to understand when we launched Kusama, um, how these um, in the world. Steiner, sorry, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to break it off there. Uh, we're running short on time. Thanks a ton. Uh, we're all super looking forward to Polkadot's launch. Obviously, we all wanna see blockchains talking to each other and we think that's gonna be a big theme going forward and a super interesting story. Thanks a lot for coming up. Thank coming you.